different. Um, this isn't something that I expect of students. I think it is something that we should be starting to learn about, but not necessarily something that we should um, be super comfortable with or super sure of ourselves with. Um, it is exactly the kind of thing our class and um, English 106, research writing, those are the kinds of things that those courses in our course are supposed to help us with. So this is just sort of um, just sort of a for your information rather than a, oh, you didn't do that right, I'm going to get mad at you on um, how you did it on, the, on your paper. It's more just, hey, there are lots of little ins and outs sort of, of figuring these things out. And why, why would you know this? Why would anyone know this just off the top of their head or off the cuff? Um, it's stuff that I have learned through trial and error and much experience, and I hope I can share that with you. So we are looking at two stories for session three for our literary analysis. Um, and if we look at, let me see if I can get the right one open. Oh, nope. Okay, so I'm going to open our session three, um, and then we'll come back to the student lounge page. So when I click on that content, um, I wanted to go there first because I wanted you to see I have the the web page is open, but they aren't giving me quite what I need. So if we go to the reading component for session three, it will tell us about um, literary terms, no dates. So that's great. That's giving us some insight into how we would cite and how we would um, also um, put into our references. So good little sort of tips floating throughout there. But then we start to see PDFs and PDFs are sort of, um, they're a nightmare. So if you don't get a PDF right, in quotation marks right, um, don't ever feel badly about it. Um, what happens a lot of times is that things are quite obviously not written on PDF. They're not written that way. Um, even a modern work, it's written as a dot .doc or something, and then it's transferred to a PDF. So because that's not the form that they are originally considered to be in, it means that we often lose some details. So here we have a web link for de Maupassant's The Necklace, and we have a PDF for Henry's The Gift to the Magi. So if I click on The Necklace, um, oops, sorry, I get this page, which has a, a, a sort of a, a little bit of info um, at first about the author, Guy de Maupassant. It gives his birth to death date. That is not a publication date. That's just saying he lived between 1850, that's when he was born, and he died in 1893. And here's just some random information. We don't need that at all either. Um, and it is going to be um, something we can scroll through. Um, but that's not really a lot, is it? Like we have a website, we have an author, we have the title, but we don't have when it was originally published. Um, then, if we were over here and we clicked on that PDF for the Gift of the Magi, it would open this. And we don't even have Henry on this page. So, O. Henry is a pseudonym, pseudonym that an author used. It's um, missing off the top of my head just now, um, but there's a wonderful museum to him and the O. Henry House in Austin, Texas, if you're ever there, to go see that. Um, so. When I look at this PDF, I'm like, okay, there's the title and the title again, but that's not really helping me, is it? And then on this page, I see O. Henry, but how would I know without some extra info that that is indeed the author? And then a lot of times what books would do in this PDF is mimicking is that facing pages. So we would have page two on our left and it would have the author. And then we would have page three on our right and it would have the title of the work. So that's that's kind of typical. So I'm getting a couple of tiny clues, but I still, I just, I'm not seeing a lot of detail about like, who is this guy? And you know, when was this published? So when we get things like a PDF, especially, we're going to have to dig. So for this one, I may not know um, Henry. I may not even know that that's useful. So I could do a search for Gift to the Magi, and then I'm going to type in publication date because I want to know when it originally happened. Um, no one is writing PDFs. They're writing in Word or they're handwriting or they're, they're doing something, but they're not writing in PDF. So I know that I have to go figure out where it came from. So if I just type in the title and the publication date, I'm going to get some great information. So it starts to tell me a little bit about the story and it gives me the biggest date. So that's going to go in my reference, 1905 comma December 10. And then in all my citations, I'm going to use 1905. And then I start to look around, like what else does it tell me? What other kind of info can I get? So I have over here, Gift of Magi, a short story by O. Henry. 
So this can be done either way. You can call him O. Henry and just use O. Period Henry as the author every time you talk about it, or you can go by just the last name Henry. Either one of those are completely okay. The, the tricky part so often is that there's always an outlier. There's always just something else. So of course, in this case, we get a really odd pseudonym. Um, so then we're, we're trying to decide, you know, how do we write this person's name down and what does that look like? So we could, in our reference, just write O period Henry. So you go with the O's. We could do Henry comma O period and then the date. So honestly, any of those are okay, which just makes it obviously difficult, which is why I don't look at any of your attempts and think, oh, you didn't do it right. Honestly, any of those are, are workable and it's up to you to decide how you'd like to manage it. So that gives me a couple of things. Um, I'm just going to go with O. Henry for now, for our example, before I look at the um, template that I created. So if I were doing the reference, I would do O. period Henry period for the next section. And then in parens, I'd do 1905 comma December 10th another paren, and then period, um, and then I would do the title of the work, so Gift of the Magi, and then another period, and then I would probably link this PDF. Um, now that I'm looking at it really closely, oh, I'm going to take that back. I wouldn't link it. So let's talk <laughs> for a moment on why even this is extraordinary. So if we look at this link, you'll notice this word in the middle, Blackboard. So what that tells us is that if I am not logged in to CCU and English 103, that this link is not going to be accessible to me. Um, and it's fine. I'm not going to, to mark you off. I'm going to probably talk to you about firewalls and all that kind of stuff. But you don't have to include um, a web address that's behind a firewall. That leads to another point about both of these stories before we try this with Guy de Maupassant's um, The Necklace. Um, these are out of copyright. Once something reaches 100 years, um, there are sort of complicated things to try to keep some copyright on it, but generally they're just out of copyright at that point. Um, and that means that there are copies absolutely everywhere. Um, if you think about it, there are plenty of Bibles that have, you know, actual, like, we can, we can track down who, who worked on that translation and they publish it and they say this is our copyright. But if you said, go look up, you know, Proverbs 31. Anyone with access to a Bible or the internet could find it. There is no specific copy that is sort of more or less important or valuable than any other copy. The whole point is that you get a copy of that chapter and that you are able to read it. And that's what we're doing with these out of copyright works. We don't have to give a website because there are so many out there. Um, anyone who types that in, so if we got rid of publication dates, and we just wanted you know, to, to read it, um, we could put it just the title, or we could even do PDF and see what comes up. We're going to end up finding immediately there are resources um, where PDFs and I can download a copy of it. So it's all out there. So the same thing, we're going to look at the necklace, and it's on a website. So this is clearly a short, easy-to-access website. I have his name, de Maupassant. So most likely I'm going to use the lowercase de and then Maupassant every time I talk about him, comma, and then G for guy. And then I'm going to have a date. So we've got to go find that date. This could be tricky because if I just say necklace, that could be a lot of things, right? Like there are actual necklaces. <laughs> so I may want to add something. So you'll notice some great suggestions, things like story or guy de Maupassant. So I can say de Maupassant. And then publication date is what I'm going to go for because I want to know when it was originally published. So here we have February 17th, 1884. So I'm going to have, I'm going to type it here <laughs> just so you can see sort of that copy. Um, in my reference, it would look something like this. And we would have 1884. And then we, we don't have to put all of the extra items like February in it. Um, but we can, and we can write it out, or we can shorten it. So as you can see, there are always like little odds and ends that you can do. We're going to go ahead and write it out today. If I can do that. <laughs> um, and then we're going to put the necklace. Oops, it shouldn't be capitalized, should it? And then I would put the, the web link that we have, because we were given a good web link that's easily accessible to anyone. Oops, I forgot that part. I'll have a 
SD there. So that's what our reference would look like. We don't always have everything. And we're just going to do our best to say, if someone read my work and was like, oh, I want to read that too. I want to know more. Then what could I give them that's going to help them find what they need? So as we saw with the necklace, the necklace could lead them anywhere on the World Wide Web. It could be absolutely anything. So we want a name and if possible, a year, because those three items are going to get our reader in that same direction. The last thing I want you to think about um, is to look for whatever your instructor is sharing. So I have support materials by session within our um, student lounge and it has lots of different links. So not only do I have readings, so I have the necklace um, and Gift to the Magi as PDFs so that they're ready to both download and copy them into those. Um, I believe um, I went ahead and put the, uh, whenever I make a PDF or I copy one, I always go in and add um, the citation, the reference, because I don't want to have to hunt it down at a later date. So you'll see that any copies I give you are thinking about those kinds of things. Um, then I also have some templates. So if I picked Henry's Gift to the Magi, I'm going to open that up. Let's try again. There we go. Um, for me, it's going to open in Word, so it's going to be in Pages, so it's going to be a tiny bit different. But what I've done is I've already given you some of the key information and some ideas for a thesis. You can use as much or as little of it as you'd like. And then down here, I've had Henry O. And like I said, you don't have to do it the same way. You could do it O Henry, and it would be fine. Um, it that's the hard part, honestly, about everything that's online. And we could put, you know, as much detail as we'd like. Just don't be like me and spell it correctly. So there are more or less things that I can put in there. Um, and then you know, go from there and see what you like. Um, but the key point I want to stress to you is to look around for clues. Um, and anytime you're stuck, just start typing info into the inter interwebs. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to look for oops, reference um, APA 7, um, O Henry, um, Gift of the Magi. We'll see what we can find. Like already people are starting to sort of give us an idea of what it could look like. So here are some possible citations. They went with Henry O. You can tell 1997 is um, a modern reprinting. And in this case, it was from a book. So they're starting to give us ideas on what we could do to tackle it. And then from there, we can keep hunting for specifics. But that's what we're doing. We, we don't always have everything right in front of us. And we are always saying, what could get someone to this? How could I share an idea and get someone excited about it. And then because of that, they want to go read or explore this themselves. And how can I give them enough information to make that happen? And that's what we're doing. We aren't going to be perfect at it. We're not always going to find all the details we want, but that's what we're looking for. And then when you do your best, I will then do my best to support that for you.